Hey guys, what is going on? My name is Alex and this is The Car Creative. And in this video, I wanna show you guys how to take this photo and turn it into this photo. And we're gonna do that in three parts. First, we're gonna talk about exposure and how to properly expose for snowy conditions. Second, we're gonna talk about color. And thirdly, we're gonna talk about masking and filters to really bring the subject out of your photo and then kind of as an extra i'm actually going to show you if you have a human in it with skin tones how you might edit that differently so let's hop into the edit here and i'll show you guys how i do this all right so if you're one of those people that's interested in the settings you can take a look up in the top left corner here and these are the settings i shot at 1640 of a second at an aperture of 2.5 and the iso of 200 i probably could have brought that down and i was shooting on the sigma 35 millimeter lens now the first thing that i do when i start editing an image is I want to crop it and I generally keep my original settings and I'm always looking at the horizon line to see if I can get this set straight as per the earth I guess so there we go I think that's a pretty good start that keeps it right in the center now I'm going to adjust my exposure we're gonna make sure that we save all of our highlights now up here in the histogram we're taking a look at our highlights here and if you look and click that button we can see that we don't want to lose any details so we're going to make sure that we retain all of our highlights and bring out the details in the snow here and it's okay if it looks a little bit underexposed um, we're just going to add some to our shadows here to bring out the details in the wheels the front grille that kind of thing and then holding option we're going to drag the blacks down until we start to see a loss of detail and it's not that bad because it's in places we don't really care to see in these kind of deep pockets of the car so that's okay so you can see that that's kind of where we're landing there now when it comes to dehaze i generally would add a bit of this in hopes that it'll bring out the details in the sky you can see that if you go extreme it's going to bring out a lot of details in the sky now we don't quite need to go that extreme we know we have the details and we're going to bring those back later clarity and texture this is up to you guys i tend to not actually do a ton of clarity i like to use sharpening and those kinds of tools rather than make it kind of gritty like this so i'm actually going to leave the clarity there okay so i'm going to skip the vibrance and saturation until we get to the color section but for the tone curve we're going to put a couple of points here on the tone curve in the highlights you can see if we push those up we're going to lose a lot of detail in the sky and in the snow so we're actually going to pull those down just a little bit and we're going to take our mid-tones and pull them up and you can see that that kind of separates some of the shadows and the highlights on the car as you can see as i push that up and i kind of like that look i like that it kind of accentuates the lines on the car and then down here in these shadows we're just going to pull those down to taste but we don't want to make it look too too contrasty just yet so we're going to leave that and i might try and pull these up because again i want to add a bit of that separation between the highlights and the shadows of the car but what i'll do is actually take these highlights up here that are probably going to be in the snowy areas and we'll pull that back down so there's our exposure for now a nice balanced looking photo now getting into the color section this is where the magic happens now you'd think if you're editing a wintry photo you just want to drag this blue dial over and you could do that but that's not what we're going to do here we're just going to reset that because we're going to up our vibrance to make sure that car is popping we're going to bring down our saturation and the reason i'm doing that is there's a lot of gunk here in the snow and typically that lands in like the yellow zone but for now, we're just gonna bring that down. And depending on your subject in your photo, uh, you can just bring this down to taste. I'm gonna bring it down to about here, knowing that when we go down to the hue, saturation, and luminance panels, we can bring back all those details. Now, specifically in this World Rally Blue BRZ, uh, it does tend to have a lot of purple in it. So I'm actually gonna bring this back to the right. And then we go to the purple, and you can see that there's such a high impact in the purple zone. So we're just gonna drag that a touch to the left to bring back the World Rally Blue color. Now, typically when I'm working with automotive photography, we're gonna bring the yellows down. That brings out the cement or kind of like the dirty colors in your photo. Aquas always tend to land in the windshield. So we'll show you this. We're gonna pump up the aqua and there it is, bring it down. And that makes it a nice clean look, just kind of taking out some of those reflections, I guess, in the window. So we're gonna do that there. And then the blue, again, our car is blue, so we can dial this into taste. It's already popping 
pretty good. So I actually don't need to do too much there. And we're gonna come down all the way to the calibration panel and we're actually gonna bump up the saturation here. You'll notice in a lot of photos, if you bump up just the blue saturation, it'll really make your photos pop. And then you can go back up to the HSL panel and kind of adjust which colors need to be taken out. And of course you can dial this into taste depending on the subject that's in your frame. Let's see if maybe we pop pop the blues there now if we pop if we pop the blues in the luminance we're kind of doing everything including the sky so we're actually going to wait till we get to the filter section to mess with the car specifically sky specifically in the ground but moving on to the color grading this is where the magic really happens to get that classic wintry look so the way that i edit my photos is i come into the shadows and you add 220 into the hue and I tend to add 10 into the saturation. Now you can add any hue you want in here, but you can see that it's kind of adding that kind of wintry blue look. So again, you can just drag this hue around and find your favorite version of winter, whether it's more of the purple side or the aqua side. Um, again, for me, 220 tends to be the sweet spot and 10 for my saturation. So we're gonna leave the luminance, we're gonna add blending it doesn't really matter where you go you can go 180 whatever i just usually land up here somewhere and i'll mess with the balance in a second because the balance tells us how balanced we're going to be between these three sections so going into the mid tones i'm just going to pop this up because you can see on the car it's adding just a bit more contrast again and pop onto our subject in the middle there so 30 looks good to me and in the highlights i'm going to add 35 and 10 in the saturation for now. And this is where we're gonna mess with the balance. So if you come up to the high side, you're gonna see we're moving more towards the 35 hue, but we actually wanna go down towards the blue side, so our shadow side. And you can see that we're going more towards that kind of clean, wintry look. Now, depending on your preference here, you could go to your shadows and pump up that blue, wintry look and make it look really cold if you want, that's great. And depending on, again, what you want, you can up the saturation to keep the warms a little warmer and add a little bit of color contrast. So as you can see, that's kind of what I'm doing here is my highlights are on the right side and my shadows are opposite, adding color contrast. And that just adds a little bit more depth in your photo. I'm actually gonna dial back some of the warmth in the highlights there because I'm gonna add that a little bit later. So just kind of moving through here again with sharpening, I'm not actually gonna to do too much to add to it, but I'm gonna hold option on my masking tool and drag that to the right. And you can see the white lines, that's the only thing that's gonna be sharpened. And I'm gonna drag that over till just the car is sharpened there. And that looks pretty good. So we don't have a ton of noise in it, but if you wanted to, you could add a bit of noise reduction. I would suggest, depending on what lens you're using, to enable profile corrections and remove chromatic aberration and try and do that at the beginning. I should have told you that at the beginning to do that first. This photo's looking pretty cool as it stands. Nice wintry blue, but we're only halfway there. When you get to this point in the editing process, this is where adding masks and filters is really gonna help this car or your subject, whatever it is, stand out of the frame. So to start, we're gonna come up to our masking panel up here, this little circle, and we're gonna grab a linear gradient tool. Now, if you drag from the bottom and hold shift, it's gonna give you a nice straight line. And we're gonna come up to about here. Yeah, it's affecting the car a little bit, but we're gonna deal with that in a second. So we're just gonna drag our exposure down just to taste, just to make sure that we're taking light away from the bottom and that's drawing our eye to the subject. So what we're gonna do is come up to subtract and we're gonna hit select subject. Now what that's gonna do here is it's actually gonna take away the darkness from the car. And if you hit O, it'll show you what your mask is doing. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new mask. We're gonna hit select subject. And that did a great job of selecting just our car, which is awesome. And from here, we're gonna dial up the exposure just a little bit to help the car stand out. You need to be really careful not to like make it pop too much because then it looks very unrealistic. So we're looking for this car to still sit very naturally in its environment and really just pop out of the frame. So I'm gonna fiddle with this a bit. We're gonna up the shadows just a touch to bring out the details again in this section here being careful with our whites and highlights to make sure it's not standing out or getting overexposed. And then using contrast to make those kind of edits that we did sit pretty naturally. 
And if we look here, this is kind of the before and after. We're not doing too, too much, but just helping that car pop out a little bit. So one of the last masks that we're gonna do is we're gonna select the sky and we're gonna see how well it can select the sky there. So it did a great job of taking the details in the sky. So what we're gonna do here is we're actually gonna dehaze the sky and bring back some of those details in the clouds. And if it gets too dark, that's all right. We're just gonna add a bit of exposure again. And I'm actually gonna warm this sky up just again to add a little bit of color contrast. I'm actually noticing like a bit of grain up there. So maybe I'll take away the clarity, take away the texture and add some noise reduction up there. And let's see what that does to the sky. Finally, we're just gonna draw one last linear gradient from the top just to draw attention to our car and just kind of bring that down just a little bit and my final step is just to kind of add contrast to taste i might try and make the car pop out just a little bit more again being careful not to overdo it because you don't want it to look unrealistic so so there you go there's a quick before and after of a nice icy blue wintry photo now, if you have a human in it, really the only difference that you're gonna do is you're just gonna make sure that your oranges or your skin tones, uh, that you're actually saturating those on your subject to make sure that they stand out. So between the orange saturation, the red hue, making sure that your reds kind of line up with that nice orange look, and your luminance, you can really dial in kind of a nice skin tone for a person or a subject in your frame. Now, what's really cool about Lightroom is you can actually create stackable presets, which is what I have done and they are for sale and we are so close to releasing version two guys. So stay tuned if you have purchased those previously, they're awesome. The edit that we just took, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes to do, I can do in almost six clicks. So I've reset the photo here and I'm gonna show you how my Car Creative Toolbox can actually help you make that edit super fast. So I'm gonna come down here to my snow day and this is just affecting the light of the photo here. And we're just gonna adjust that a little bit. Then for the curves, we're gonna again click snow day and we're seeing how that's popping into the color section. I've got my kind of blue, which is a sweet little BRZ color. And then from there, we're just going to make sure to soften the sharpening or I don't know, maybe we'll use this one. And then I've got some new filters that are going to give you a bit more selection with what you're doing on the lower. You can even stack a couple of those on each other if you want. You can darken the top, bringing down the exposure on the sky there, or you can lighten the sky if you choose. And then you can hit that sky update. And when it says update there, that means you need to go in and update your subject. And we're going to do that for both our subject and our sky. So going up to our filters here, we're going to take our car, update that, hit our sky, update that, adjust that a little bit because it comes in a bit dark. Then we're going to make sure our crop is good to go. This, adjust our exposure and really quickly you have a banging photo in just like 10 clicks so pretty cool little toolbox and you guys can purchase that in my store link down below but that is a quick way to edit wintry blue photos i appreciate your time so much and if you enjoyed watching this video please give it a thumbs up if you learned something feel free to subscribe if you're into content like this and i hope to see you guys in the next one peace